G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and welcome to my tiny vineyard. Today I'm doing a little bit of a monitoring activity looking for a common pest in the vineyard called light brown apple moth. For activities like these, a small hand lens can sometimes be quite useful in finding small critters, but what I'm basically going to be doing is having a look at two key sections of the canopy today in my hunt for this particular little beast. It's important when you're doing this stuff that you know how the animals operate and how they live. So let's get into it and I'll go through the basics and I'll also show you some fantastic things that I'm finding in the vineyard in terms of natural predator populations. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you like this kind of content, there's plenty more like this on timthompson.ag. Let's get into the monitoring activity and have a look at some of the things that we're finding. <laughs> to start out with, the life cycle of the light brain apple moth is an interesting one. Eggs are laid down on the mature leaves lower in the canopy. They then hatch and the small grubs crawl out and fold up a leaf on an active growing tip. So there's two key places that you should be monitoring if you're looking for light brown apple moth. Down around the fruiting zone in the more mature leaves and also up near the top of the shoots. Interestingly enough, when they complete their life cycle at the top of the shoots and they're ready to pupate and turn into a moth again, they crawl back down the plant and actually insert themselves in a bunch of fruit that's developing. Now that's the worst part about this creature and that's what causes the problem in vineyards because the mouth parts of the light brown apple moth carry spores for the disease botrytis and the damage they do to the growing berries allows those spores into the fruit. Botrytis is brown rot and it destroys the entire bunch. Even a small number of light brown apple moth are a problem in vineyards because they can decimate your crop. So today I'm going to be having a look at the mature leaves down the bottom and the younger leaves at the top. Down the bottom I'm going to be looking for egg clusters on mature leaves and I'm also going to be looking for web structures around the developing bunches. At the top I'm going to be looking for evidence of feeding and I'm also going to be looking for folded over leaves because they might be hiding a little light brown apple moth larvae inside them and I've got one to show you later on. When I'm looking at the upper canopy, leaves like this are of particular interest to me because they display symptoms of feeding. But on this leaf here, you can see there's actually a spider sitting inside a web and I think he's had a nice meal because there's no evidence of folded over leaf and light brown apple moth larvae anywhere near this leaf. Don't assume just because a leaf is folded that it actually contains a light brown apple moth larvae either. There's all sorts of beneficials that actually fold over leaves for various purposes, like spiders when they're laying eggs. Have a look at this little spider family that I disturbed when I was looking for moths. So make sure you get your hands dirty and investigate every fold. Have a look at that. We've got a spider colony. Now we're going to leave that alone because they're going to take care of any light brown apple moths in this immediate vicinity. Speaking of spiders, check out old mate here. Not only does it look like he's had a good feed, but you can see the web remains that used to house a light brown apple moth and you can see evidence of chewing in a couple of the pieces of fruit. Now this is early enough for that to scab over and dry out and I'm not too concerned. If I had a lot of evidence of this chewing, I would be very concerned and I would step up my monitoring. In fact today it's been really difficult to find your light brown apple moth larvae. I would have thought after the flight that we had and the egg masses that I've seen that we would have had stacks of light brown apple moth in this in this vineyard. But I've now found some really healthy telltale signs of a light brown apple moth and these are the following. Eaten areas of leaf, webbing that's folded the leaf over and a nearby habitat tree that the adult moth could have come out of when they were laying their eggs. So we've got those three things close together. I think we've got a good chance of opening up this leaf and finding a light brown apple moth larvae. Let's have a look at its behaviour when you disturb it and get some tips for looking for them and actually finding them. When you open up the folded leaf area, make sure that you keep the palm of one hand below the natural channel that that fold makes because what will happen is the light brown apple moth larvae will become stressed and as soon as they become stressed they drop down on a thread to about 10 centimeters below the leaf and they just hang down there. So oftentimes they do that so quickly as you're opening the leaf you miss them and it'll just look like a little green flash dropping out of the leaf. 
hold your hand underneath and you'll be sure to grab the light brown apple moth larvae so you can have a look at it and see what growth stage it's in because they go through about three to four instars before they go down to pupate and hatch in the bunches of grapes. Well, I'm absolutely wrapped with what I've found here today. I regularly monitor the vineyard. I'm in here every week or so, having a look for the diseases and pests that I expect to find. And that allows me to use softer techniques to control them. The other thing I'm really pleased with, and it's a vindication, is that by treating the vineyard floor as a living, growing, ecosystem I've actually created a lot more predator populations than I've ever seen before in some of the commercial vineyards that I used to manage way back when. The most important thing when you have the approach of minimizing your use of chemicals and maximizing your biodiversity is that you keep a continuous eye on things. Chemical companies are coming out with some fantastic new products that are more biologically based but of course these as well need to be used with a lot more caution than the old harsh pesticides that we used to rely on. For example, I'm going to be using Dipel to control any population bursts of light brown apple moth. I keep a drum on hand and this is a bacterial spore that reacts in the alkaline gut of the light brown apple moth larvae and achieves control within about 24 hours. There are tricks with this though. It's not a harsh chemical, so it doesn't stay on the leaves for weeks. You have to spray it at the right time. You've got to spray it at the first instar, just after egg hatch. And you've got to spray it in the evening so that you capture the little grubs as they move about the plant feeding at night time because remember they're trying to avoid the predators. So when you use natural solutions to pest problems, you do have to use a little bit more of this and you have to be prepared to work outside of normal hours but I can tell you as I walk through this vineyard and I don't smell any chemicals and I hear the sounds of the natural insects all around me and I see the beautiful green healthy growth the reward is visible guys I hope you like this video and if you do make sure you hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up there's plenty more content on timthompson.ag and I'll see you next week